everyone and welcome to Edward C. Her Gymnasium on the campus of Lima Central Catholic High School. As today, the Holy War takes place as Lima Central Catholic welcomes in the Delta St. John Blue Jays. Hello everyone, I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Frank Kill and our entire WSN crew. Frank, you've been a part of this rivalry, you know what it means. How important is today's game? Oh, it's always a big game. You know, it's one of those games you circle on your calendar and, and for, for all those that are watching, you know, it is truly a traditional game that these people, these folks, I mean, you see the sea of just nothing but uh, Blue Jay Blue, and then obviously the, the, fam the families and friends of LCC are all here. This is a big game, and, and I can tell you from my family history, this is one of those games where there's a lot of love-hate relationships out here. <laughs> ah, that's right. Frank, we take a look at the visitors, Delta St. John's. They come in at 8-2, 2-0 two, two in the MAC. A really strong team this year, and it all starts and stops with a sophomore, Cameron Hour, 28.5 a game. Uh, he's he's a stud, and one of those kids that I, you know I've been able to watch him grow up over the years, and he's taken his game to another level. And and tonight, you know, he's going to see a defense like LCC's, and you know what, the, we'll see if he can rise to the challenge because he, Cameron Eller does a lot of things for the St. John's Blue Jays, and you know what. It's going to be a great game for 32 minutes to watch this kid play. And the home squad, the LCC T-Birds. Frank, Jordan Pretty leads his team at 16 points a game, but I want to talk about Willie Foster. That young man, the last two to three weeks, has really played maybe his best basketball of his young career. Well, I mean, kind of the coming out party, you know, against OG, you know, hitting that game winner kind of brings the confidence level as, that you want from a kid. And he's a sophomore, and the two sophomores for the Thunderbirds between Pretty and Foster have been leading the way scoring-wise, but you can't forget about Carson Parker and Billy Burke and DeMar Foster to round out their, their lineup. But, you know, they're, they're, this is a team that's on a mission right now, and, and seeing DeMar out there, you know, fully healthy is, is really exciting to see. I was able to be there with, through his struggles of his injuries, but having that Foster to Foster connection, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Hutchins brothers back in the early yes, 90s. Yeah, so, you know, obviously Anthony and Aaron were very talented, but you know, these, these two here for LCC, they're pretty special. Frank, let me ask you this. Does, does a Sunday afternoon game, does it change your approach to the week, to the work week? I know typically you're playing Friday and Saturday. LCC did play last night. Delta St. John's got canceled Friday night. Does it change up how you do things? Well, if you're, if you're Coach Albert from St. John's, you know, their game got getting canceled on Friday really kind of takes a step back a little bit because obviously that was a conference game. And so, you know, I think he's playing tomorrow. So tonight, or today, he's, he's just spoken at the task at hand. He's very comfortable and he, he's, you know, he's obviously a knowledgeable sure. coach who's been scouting LCC for years. He knows what they're going to do. I think you might come out here today and see something a little different from him, try to throw a little wrinkle in the page, maybe sniff a little zone because he's going to try to help, you know, Make, make LCC shoot their way to a victory today. Absolutely. LCC comes into the game at 11-0. Uh, you and I were both out here a couple weeks ago. We watched that big win against Otto Atlanta, and they've kind of rode that emotion the last couple weeks, and they're really playing good basketball. You, know, you, you win 11 in a row, it's not easy. And, and I think that you know today is going to be a huge task, too, for them to play Delta St. John's. But you know when you have seniors, again, like Burks, Parker, Jamar Foster, Parker Judy coming off the bench, you know, these guys are, are, are guys that are experienced with a lot of knowledge, a lot of, you know, a lot of game time, you know, minutes. So, you know, if you're LCC, you ride your seniors and you, you, you kind of let your sophomores carry the way too. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's game. For the Delta St. John's Blue Jays, they'll come in with number five, Colin Feather, 5'11 senior at 5.6 a game. Number 11, Cameron Elwood, we spoke of him earlier, the six-foot sophomore, 28.5 a game. Number 12, Austin Mentor is a six-foot senior at 6.3. Number 23, Andrew Elwood, the younger brother, a 5'11 freshman, 8.5. And number 33, Aaron Mentor, a 6'2", senior at 5.2. For the homestanding birds, they'll go with Jordan Pretty at 16 points a game, the sophomore guard. Number one, Willie Foster, the sophomore at 12.2. Number two, Carson Parker, the quarterback, at 8.1 a game. Damar Foster, 7.9 a game, the senior forward. And number 14, Billy Burke, six points a game. Well, if I'm not, if I didn't, uh, I should have been a gambling man because obviously St. John's coming out here in a little two-three zone, right. little matchup, trying to uh, kind of call LCC off guard. I was going to ask you about that, Coach. This is Carson Parker with the ball. He'll swing it over to Foster. Three ball from the right side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down. Goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the birds. And that's the worst part of the zone. It's really tough to rebound in it. So you got to get five guys to really buy in to, to body up. But you know, here's St. John's right now. You know, coming out of a matchup. 
out of the out of bounds. And coach, we talked about uh, Elwer uh, already this afternoon in 28.5 a game, but did you see when we, in our preparation the number of times he's been to the free throw line? The young man knows how to get to the rim. Oh, definitely. They all do it. And I think it's one thing that uh, both coaches really emphasize on, on uh, you know, getting to the basket. There's another three ball that goes off the mark. A second chance by the Birds. They'll go inside to Burke at the high post. They'll swing it around. So a lot of chances here for the Birds here in the first opening minutes of this quarter. Well, Kick. two offensive rebounds, too. Absolutely. That's pretty from the left side. Burke again throws it off the back side, and he throws it off of Aaron Minter, and it's going to go back to the Birds. So a third straight possession for the T-Birds. Well, again, <laughs> Coach Howard's getting everything he's, <laughs> he's planned for in terms of, hey, let's make him shoot right. from 20 feet. But, you know, you got to box out, too. T-Birds will inbounds underneath their basket. This is Carson Parker. He'll dribble drive to the foul line. Thought about kicking it back out. He'll kick it up top. This is Foster, a little 15-footer. It goes off the mark, and the rebound comes down to Elwer. He'll lead the break down the middle of the floor. A well, good possession by the T-Birds. Just didn't come away with anything. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. There you saw Aaron Mentor, the 6'2 senior, knocks in the triple, and the Jays lead 3-0 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. He is their biggest guy, but he also can take the three, too. I've watched this man for, for a few years take three, so definitely capable of doing it. There's a three ball from Parker at the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Jays. It's corralled by number 12, Aaron Mentor. He'll bring it down the right side, and that's where the Jays will set shot with 6.08 remaining in the first quarter. Well, there's Mentor again, looking for a shot. <laughs> a little heat check there by Mentor as he misses the foul line extended jumper. Swing down. This is pretty from the right side. Ball goes off the mark. The rebound comes down, and it's corralled by Colin Feathers. He'll get it in the hands of Elwood. Well, that's five threes for LCC right now. So Coach Heller's uh, scouting report's right on. <laughs> There's another shot by Mentor from the left side, and Elwer rebounds this one. So he tries to go the right side. He's cut off in the, on the right side by Pretty. They'll swing it back around. Well, St. John's doing a really nice job of being patient. There you saw a three ball from the right side. There you saw Aaron Elwer, who gets a screen out top. Here's Pretty on the dribble drive. He loses the handle on the ball. Here come the Jays as they'll bring it back down. Well, it was a good attack by Jordan, and unfortunately there were two guys in his way and kind of just lost it going up. Our three-point sponsor today is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road, right next to LCC. There's Elwer, and there you see the shooting range from Aaron Elwer as he knocks in the triple, and he makes it 6 nothing on the Leafs' famous recipe scoreboard. Well, Cameron just had a really good look there, so you, know, you, gotta, you can't let him go. And I said Aaron Elwer, excuse me, that's Cameron Elwer. Pretty thought about taking the jumper. Gets it inside to Bork. Bork tries to take it in. The ball is stripped. Here come the Jays. Well, Billy Burke just had, he just lost it there again. Brought it below his waist. I've always told him little guys are down there, and unfortunately, little guys always win. There's a three ball from the right side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to DeMar Foster. DeMar Foster gets it over to Carson Parker. Parker goes behind his back. He'll swing it around to Willie Foster. They'll go back up to Parker. Parker goes foul line. Jumper goes up, and it's good. Carson Parker. Boy, we talk about him a lot in his versatility on the defensive end, but the guy can score. No, he can score, and that's his shot right there. 15-footer in, just one dribble pull up. I'm glad to see him take that instead of the three. He makes it 6-2 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Well, Jordan has to be careful there. I mean, it's, it's, it's Cameron Hour. You're, it's you're, it's going to be really hard to take the ball from that kid. So I like the aggressiveness here early on in the first quarter. It's, it's the only, it's the first foul between two teams. So it's going to be a good battle. When, today. Yeah, when I saw Jordan guarding him, I thought to myself, you know, that that's a, that's a, uh, Alpha males, two, you know, two of the best sophomores in the area going head to head. So we're going to have a great matchup between those two today. Well, it's going to be nice to see for the next three years seeing <laughs> these guys go against each other. Yeah, absolutely. Great defense there by Willie Foster as they are all over the Jays and they step out of bounds there. So there you saw Andrew Bell were having all kinds of issues there with the ball. Well, Andrew just, I mean, he lost his footing. Good. I mean, he did a really good job of keeping his composure, but he just stepped out of bounds. To, he was trying to throw it off, off the leg of Carson Parker. DeMar Foster with the ball on the right side. He gets a screen from Pretty. Little dribble drive to the baseline. Gets, finds Carson Parker to the bucket. That's Parker knocks Carson him in, and he makes it 6-4 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. And that's what you do in a zone. You dribble penetration, make the defense turn their backs, and then cut to the open spot. There's Elwer from three land. Andrew Elwer knocks in the triple, and he makes it 9-4. to four. Well, That's Delphus' third three. 
Nice drive Willie there by Willie Foster. Foster. There you saw the quickness, Coach. He gets to the rim as quick as anybody. Well, I don't know if Coach Powell had anything to do with it, <laughs> but their first two possessions were nothing but threes. Last three possessions, they've been going to the hoop. This is Elwer again. There's a little 12-footer off the mark. Rebound comes down. Burke gets it out to Carson Parker. Parker a little nifty behind the back. He leads the break down the middle of the floor. Here comes Carson Parker. Gets it over to Foster. Foster thought about taking the shot. He's going to dribble drive. Finds Parker again. And he, no, oh, he misses the shot. Rebound comes down to the Jays. Well, that was a great penetration there by Willie Foster. Going baseline, getting the defense up in here and just dishing it off to Carson. But just left it a little short. It's just amazing, Coach, the way Carson Parker knows where to be on the floor at all times. He's so heady of a player. Well, I love seeing kids move to the ball and, and not gravitate away from it. A lot of kids just like to stay behind the three-point line, but Carson Parker's flashing to the hoop right there. And when you tap penetration like that, defense is going to collapse, and you got to find the open man. Parker Judy enters the game now for the Birds. Well, he's a shooter, so if they see this zone, maybe look look to be a zone buster. Never thought about taking the shot. He's took th two threes already today. Billy Burke is all over him out top. They'll swing it around. This is Tice McLean in the ball game now for the Jays. McLean on the left side. He's guarded by Carson Parker. Parker, a much more a bigger height advantage, I should say, than McLean. There's a three ball from the right side. Here comes Parker with the rebound. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. He's got Burke on the left. He finds Pretty on the right side. Pretty with a little 15-footer off the mark. And it goes out of bounds. We'll go back to the Jays. Well, LCC did it. I, I like the fact that they're not you know, shooting threes right now. They, they kind of settled it down, you know, weathered the storm a little bit, hadn't made any yet, but they're going to start falling. They, they truly believe that, hey, you know, we're shooters out here. And what do shooters do at best? They shoot the ball. Matthew Quatman enters the game for the Birds at the junior guard, averages two points a game. I, I really like Matthew Quatman's game. I like what he brings to this. He brings a lot of toughness and grit to this team. Well, if you know who he's guarding, that's who we stuck him on last year. <laughs> yeah. You know, Matthew Quatman, just as a sophomore last year, just took the challenge of guarding Cameron Eller. It, you're not going to stop Cameron Eller. You just hope to contain him. And, and I was going to ask you that, Coach. Is that a concerted effort to bring more than one guy onto him, know where he's at on the field at all times? Oh, on the floor, excuse me. Yeah, definitely. And, and if you've got guys like Jordan Pretty, you've got guys like Matthew Quatman who can guard, it helps. And there you see a nice dribble drive by Austin Menner, the six foot senior, knocks it in. Well, oh, nice good. block there by Menner. As, he swats the ball away, and they go back to Cameron Elwer. Here's a three ball from the top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to D'Angelo Collins. The junior in at 3.5 a game. Now, Angelo Collins brings some good minutes. There's a three ball from the left side. Splash by Parker, Parker Judy. Judy. And he gives it for the 9-11 deficit with 1-11 to go. Well, you got guys like Quatman and Judy out there that can shoot the three. And when they get hot, you better, better watch out. We're down to the final minute of the first quarter. Jays lead 11 to 9 on the Leeds Famous Recipe scoreboard. Both teams playing really good defense. They'll go inside to Menner. Menner guarded by D'Angelo Collins. He's on the low post. He'll go to the left side, in the middle, back to the right. And he scores. Nice move there by Aaron Menter, the 6 2 senior, as he shakes and bakes, knocks it in to make it 13 to 9 on the Leeds Famous Recipe scoreboard. Great post move there by Menner. Just patience and just used, this, just used a nice drop step there. There's a three ball from the right side. That's off the mark. This is Cam Elwer, brings it down the floor. There's 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Elwer swings it around. It's knocked out of bounds. Parker Judy did a great job of getting back in defense. Good hustle back. You know, when, when you get behind the ball, nothing, you've got nothing but to do is sprint. And I love seeing kids just not giving up on the play because he could have easily dogged it back. And, they, they, you know, Blue Jays taking a wide open shot. So Colin Feathers will take a seat for the Jays. And Dolph St. John's will inbounds it. This is Mentor, guarded by Collins. Well, I was going to say, I'd be interested to see with 20 seconds left if St. John's pulled out and take the last shot here. Played a really, really good first quarter here. We're down to 10 seconds. Well, Cameron Eller off the floor. Someone's going to have to make a shot. There's a three from Mentor. Nothing but net. Aaron Mentor knocks it in to make it 16 to nine. He's got eight on the night. After one quarter of play from Lima Central Catholic High School, the Delta St. John's Blue Jays lead the LCC Thunderbirds 16 to nine. We'll have second quarter action right after these messages.
Welcome back to Lima Central Catholic High School. We're after one quarter of play. The T-Birds down by the Delta St. John's Blue Jays. I've got Blue Jays, I've got T-Birds, and it's 16 to nine after one quarter of play. Our instant replay sponsor tonight is Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Frank, some really good shooting by the Blue Jays. Well, Minter, you know, coming in the game tonight, you know, obviously, you know, probably below his average a little bit, but come, kid comes out, knocks down a couple threes, and St. John's was four, four of eight that quarter from the three-point line, two of five from two, so, you know, here's a, here's a team that's going to win by the three and die by the three. And right now, boy, they're living on the edge. Yeah, I want to ask you, and you mentioned it earlier, Lima Central Catholic comes out and really not trying to knock down a lot of threes, not going their way. Do you think Sean Powell had talked about that at the break? Well, LCC was one of seven that quarter from three. So, you know, you really got to try to get it inside because that's where their bread and butter is. Even if you go inside and, sure. and then kick it out, it makes it a lot easier. Braden Klaus in the game now for the Blue Jays. Well, this I'm, is Austin Mentor. Go ahead. Frank. Well, I'm saying St. John's is resting Cameron Eller right now because he knows, man, he's getting guarded like like a fly, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Just fly on stake. You know? Yeah, so. you're, no, you're absolutely right. It's going to take its toll on the young man. As good a player as he is, that's a tough assignment for that young man. Well, and you want him fresh down the stretch, too. I mean, even though it's the second quarter, they got halftime, they're still going to, you, you got to get him some rest because, again, he's got a game tomorrow, too. So, you know, you don't want to wear this kid out and, and just spend everything. There's a nice steal by Parker as they get on the floor and they dive for the ball. Loose ball comes back to the Jays. We thought about attacking the rim. That was number 14, Grant Alm, who's in the game now. Alm with the ball in the corner, guarded by Billy Burke. They'll swing it back around to the top of the key. Both teams come in averaging over 60 points I think points we got an game. injury on the floor here. I think you're right, as it looks like Braden Klaus is holding his shoulder. And he looks to be in a lot of pain. The trainers are... Taking a look at him, let's uh, hope that he's all right. They'll take him and uh, address that issue. Need to find Mr. Miyagi. Get, <laughs> get him some juice and, you know, get him some juice and on here. <laughs> Looks like he's moving around, so it's a good thing. Right. Yeah, for St. John's, I mean, they've had the ball for a minute here and not even taking a shot yet. Cameron Elwer back in the game now for the Blue Jays. He's guarded by Jordan Pretty, two of the area's premier sophomore guards. And there's a nice back cut by Elwer, and he's going to be fouled by Billy Burke on the shot. That'll put him in line for two shots. Well, I love seeing St. John's go right at it, you know, getting him back in the game. Probably had a minute and a half of game time rest, but it could have been two or three minutes, you know, within between the quarters. So I'm sure Cameron's just ready. He's got his tank filled back up. Our free throw sponsor tonight is the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Unterbrink of the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus provides quality comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. Did you ever tell any officials they had good eyesight, Frank? Oh, all, especially <laughs> all these down here, especially Doc Morris. I saw Doc down there. <laughs> hey, man, Elwer knocks that in and makes it 18 to 9 on the Leeds Famous Recipe scoreboard. Jordan Pretty with the ball in the corner. Swing it out to Foster. Foster will swing it over to Parker. Billy Burke in the middle of the floor. There's a pass to Pretty. He'll dribble drive, take it inside. Beautiful move. Jordan Pretty shows you the athleticism. And he makes it 18 to 11. Jay still lead with 6.20 to go. Just a great shot fake. And then just the ability to get to the basket and avoid the contact is just really, really nice to see. He, he's really talented, Coach. He, he can get to the rim, and that first dribble, you know, he just, he's got such great length, and he really moves to the basket. There's a nice move by Mentor, and a really nice recovery by Billy Burke as he swats it out of bounds. Well, you know, Billy kind of got beat off the dribble a little bit, but Billy didn't give up on the play. So, you know, Billy Burke has that length and has that ability, so, you know, he didn't give up on the play. No inbounds at the Cameron Elwer on the right side. Elwer throws to the baseline. A little fadeaway jumper. He knocks it in. Cameron Elwer knocks in the jumper. He's got seven on the night. It's 20 to 11 on the Lee's famous recipe board. Well, after that, you know, after him getting a little bit of rest, his legs look real <laughs> looks fresh. I was say, it looks like he feels really good, Coach. This is Foster. He thought about taking the jumper there. Pretty go inside to Burke. Burke guarded by Minter inside. Good matchup down low by those two big men. Well, when Billy caught the ball there, you'd love to see some people move. DeMar Foster with the shot and rebound Jordan comes down to Jordan Pretty. Right Johnny on the spot. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 527 to go. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And you saw uh, young Cameron Elwer with the fadeaway jumper. It, it just really amazes me how he's not a big kid and he's not afraid to go in. He'll go out, he'll step away. The fadeaways, he's got the whole arsenal. He's got a great package and you know, I know he works on it and he's a very intelligent young man too. So, you know, the intelligence is, is the biggest thing because he's smart about his game. He doesn't force a lot. Here you see some pressure from LCC and Double St. John's will break that pressure, get the ball to Mentor on the left side. He's double teamed by Foster and Burke. So they try to get a call, and the ball goes out of bounds, and they go back to Double St. John's. So a little pressure there for the Birds. Well, you know, they pick up full court. They, they get in that 2-2-1 two, two, set, and then obviously it's the first pass down the side, they want a trap, and they got their trap right there. They just weren't able to come away with the steal, but good job from Delta St. John's by not panicking and, and throwing it away. Number 10, Drew Boggs, the 6'1 sophomore, comes into the game for the Blue Jays. They'll go right side. This is Andrew Elwer, swings it across. Back to Menner. Menner, we thought about taking the three, but Menner has Billy Burke guarding him, tried to take it up to the foul line. Ball gets back to Elwer at the top of the key. 4.49 to go. Danny Hilbert, Frank Hill from Lima Central Catholic High School, the Holy War on a Sunday afternoon. Frigid conditions outside. I'm going to use the old term, but it's hot inside. You knew I was going to say oh, that. Yeah. You knew I was going to say that. I, I like climate controlled <laughs> venues. <laughs> Me too. I'm glad we're not playing up in Fro Park, I'll be honest. No, thank you. <laughs> but I like Delta St. John's patient here. You know, they're really trying to get the ball inside, but Aaron Mentor has done a really good job of being aggressive and attacking the basket, too. There's another fadeaway by Elwer, and Elwer gets the ball with his back to the basket, turns it around, knocks it in, he makes it 22-13. He's got nine to lead all scorers. Well, he, he did a great job there. I just love seeing that in his package. There's Foster, nice dump off to Burke. Burke gets his own rebound, it goes back to the Jays. Good job by Billy Burke being on the right place at the right time, just doesn't knock the shot down. Well, he, DeMar, or Willie Foster did a really nice job of setting him up, getting him open, but just couldn't finish. There's a three ball from Elwer off the mark. Rebound comes down to Foster. He'll lead the break down the middle of the floor. Goes between his legs, almost lost the ball. Great job of maintaining that. Jordan Pretty, three ball from the right side. Rebound comes down to the Jays. It's corralled by Austin Minter, and he'll walk it down the floor with 3.29 to go, and the Jays with a 22-13 lead. We better get it across half court. <laughs> it's kind of casual when he brought it down. He there. was. <laughs> no hurry. But that's Carson. St. John's offense right now. They're, they're being very patient. But again, Carson Parker with a good five second call there. Carson Parker, I mean, we said it before, but he can really D it up. And there you saw the work he puts in on Austin Mentor. A huge mismatch size wise, but Carson Parker doesn't take a backseat to anybody in athleticism. And then you see who's point guard here. You know, he's the quarterback <laughs> right. on the football field, but now he's the point guard on the basketball team bringing it up. LCC needs to do a, they need to really focus somehow, some way to get the ball inside around the rim because they've been, you know, everything's been outside the paint. This is pretty, goes inside to Parker. Parker wheeling deals straight up. Off the mark, he misses the shot. Great position by Carson Parker. Rebound comes down to Cameron Elwer. He brings it down the right side. He'll dribble drive, kick it back out. Three ball on the way, and it's good. Andrew Elwer, the 5'11 freshman, knocks in the three ball. He's got six on the night, and the Jays lead 25-13 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. Well, that's, their, that's their first three they made this quarter, but overall, that's five threes for the Blue Jays right now. So, and there you saw Foster throwing the ball to Parker, and he just looked up at him. He said, hey, I wasn't ready. Another turnover. Here comes Elwer, guarded by Pretty. Elwer's going to take it inside, and he throws the shot up, and he hits the deck hard. He'll go to the line for two. He saw downhill right there and went right after him, and he does a great job of creating contact but absorbing it and getting the shot off. And, you know, for, for Cameron Elwer, he, he's a kid that just wants to get to the rim. You stop him, as we've seen so far, stops and pops and does and embraces the contact and knocks things down. So, you know, for Cameron Elwer to get to the rim there, you know, he was on a mission. Cameron Elwer at the Pat's Donuts and, excuse me, the, lost my, Lost my thought, the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's free throw line there. I know a good doctor. I was going to say, a lot, 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 of, lot of sponsors <laughs> here, you know. Jacob's looking at me like, what are you talking about? I, I look at Pat's Donuts and Cream, and I just lose all kinds of talk there. And they're open until 9. 
27-13 on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. I'm talking Lee's, I'm talking Pats. Birds with the ball, 2.15 to go. Danny Hilbert, Frank Kill from Lima Central Catholic High School. The Holy War, as they like to call it. Foster tries to go in and got away with one. I thought he traveled. And they're going to say foul, and they're going to get, looks like they're going to get number 12, it looks like. Yeah, Austin, Austin Mentor. Mentor. Yeah, he cut him off, but he did body him a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, to be worthy enough of a foul, I mean, the official had the better angle, so. There's Parker, thought about taking the three, was going to lean into the defender. Gets it over to Pretty. Burke gets a screen for Pretty. They'll screen to the, or go to the right side. Three ball from the right side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Cam Elwer. Blue Jays lead 27-13 with 1.49 to go. LCC 1 of 10 right now behind the arc. Coach, is it me? LCC just looks flat right now with, 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 with their body movement, and they just look like they're tired. And, you know, I know they played last night, but is that the effect of Delta St. John's or is that LCC? I think it should be, you know, a little bit of both, but these are high school kids. I mean, yeah. if you're not up for this game. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, you're in the wrong business because this is a really good matchup between two really good teams. But, you know, if you're LCC, you know, you're down 14 points. You're one of 10 from the three-point line. Your bread and butter should be getting to the hoop, not just settling for threes. I used to talk to my kids all the time, Coach. When we couldn't score, I said, we got to get to the rim. We got to create body contact. We got to get to the foul line. And gets, it makes some motivation happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and getting to the rim is, if they don't fall around the rim, that's one thing. But, you know, you got to at least try. Absolutely. There's a three ball from the left side, and it's good. Splash down. Austin Minner, the six-foot senior, makes it 30 to 13, the biggest lead of the night for the Blue Jays with 105 to go. The Blue, Blue Jay Nation's on their feet right they now. They sure are, and they've brought a ton of people here. This whole side is full. There's Jordan Pretty from the right side. It goes off the mark, and it looks like it's going to go back to Line of Central Catholic. Well, again, <laughs> there's Blue Jay Nation, Coach. They didn't like that they call. They didn't like that call, <laughs> but you know what? Jordan had a really good shot there, but Carson Parker had a really good opportunity for an offensive rebound, and obviously the foul was called, but obviously the St. John's people, they don't have the angle that that official right. had. So they don't see, they only see one side. I mean, as an official, you're always going to be 50% right and 50% wrong. DeMar Foster will check back in the game for Parker Judy. He will inbounds underneath. St. John's basket, or excuse me, underneath LCC's basket. I like how they're double teaming Carson Parker. Cameron Elworth, did he jump up and hit that? I believe he jumped up and hit that. Yeah, he jumped up ahead, not only that, jumped up ahead and in an attempt to save it too. I mean, just <laughs> sacrificing, but see how they're double teaming Carson Parker there? Yeah, Foster throws it off the back of the Blue Jay defender, gets the ball inbounds. He'll turn it up and set it up shop. Up by the half court line with 45 seconds to go. It's been a very quick half here. Not a lot of fouls called. But DeMar take, getting orders from uh, Coach Powell here. It'd be really good for the T-Birds to get a basket here, take the momentum into the locker room. But you know, St. John's, you know, they're back into their 2-3 zone. They'll swing it over to Pretty. Pretty goes Carson Parker, middle of the floor. They'll go other side to Foster on the right side. Willie Foster goes back into Carson Parker. Parker double teamed every time he touches it. Ball swatted away. Here comes Cam Elwer. Goes down the left side, guarded by Foster. Ball goes up. He misses the shot. Rebound comes down. Parker leads the break down the middle of the floor. Here comes Carson Parker. Takes it straight up, and he misses the shot, but he's going to get a foul on the play. Well, Carson could have pitched it up the floor, but he saw the defenders there kind of going to take away Willie, take away Jordan on the wing, and he just had it himself, and he had a spot right down the middle. And, you know, with 10 seconds left when he caught that ball, He's like, I got to make something happen for my team. Parker will go to the ice side of Lyman Delphi's free throw line. He knocks the first one down. Our instant replay tonight is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. So Parker hits the first free throw, cuts the lead to 30 to 14 with 3.9 seconds to go here in the half. All Delphi St. John's here in the first half with hot shooting and good defense on the birds. Second one on the way. And it is good. Carson Parker knocks in the second one. He's got six on the night. It makes it 30 to 15 on the Lee's famous recipe school board. And there is the last shot of the half. So after one half of play from Lima Central Catholic, the Delta St. John's Blue Jays lead the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds 30 to 15. We'll have second half action right after these messages.
Welcome back to Lima Central Catholic High School. We're after one half of play. The Delta St. John Blue Jays, under some hot shooting, lead the Lima Central Catholic T-Birds 30 to 15. And Frank, just sizzling from the outside, the Blue Jays. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're coming out shooting with confidence. And, and I said, you know, going into this game that, uh, you know, LCC was going to have to you know, defend Cameron Eller, but they're getting a lot of support from other guys between the Air Manor and, and Cameron's younger brother. Um, just you know, Andrew making, making some big threes, and obviously St. John's right now shooting 6 of 12. To shoot 50% from the three-point line right now, if LCC would be doing that, this game would be a lot closer because LCC shooting 1 of 11 from the three-point line, but you know, from even 4 of 12 from twos from LCC. So 30, about 30% 30 from the game right now for LCC, where if you're Delphi St. John's, you're shooting about 50% because they're, they were 4 of 9 from the, uh, the two-pointer. So, you know, each team shooting flawless from the free throw line right now. Two for two for LCC and four for four for Delta St. John's. And, you know, not a lot of fouls been called. So look to see these two teams attacking differently the second half because if, if, if Coach Powell doesn't make some adjustments, you know, it's going to be a long, long Sunday, you know, Martin Luther King Day weekend for them. Yeah, and speaking of those adjustments, Frank, we look at the athleticism. And look, I know they're down 15. LCC has a team that can come back from this. Obviously, we've seen that before. Do their guards have to get to the rim more? They continue this shooting and hope that something goes in. Well, I think the, the attack is important, but also when one's attacked, Delphi St. John's just not going to let them drive to the hoop. They're going to have to attack, but also find an open guy attacking the basket off the ball. So, you know, instead of just having one guy attack, with four other guys playing it around the three-point line, it's not going to be. They haven't had very much success in this first half. That doesn't mean things couldn't turn around in the second half. Fortunately for LCC, they're shooting at the same rim that St. John shot at the first half. Maybe it's a little hotter <laughs> down here, <laughs> and that'll do it for our halftime adjustments. We'll be back with third quarter action right after these messages. And we're back here as the third quarter is just getting ready to get started from Miami Central Catholic High School, where the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays lead the LCC Team Works 30 to 15. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC. And tonight's instant replay sponsor is Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. So, partner, third quarter getting ready to get underway. And Still cold outside. <laughs> well, I, think, I, I think St. John's was very successful in that first half by taking care of the ball. You know, they didn't turn the ball You're over right. to lead to point. transition points. They did, they did a, a very good job of just being, you know, patient and not forcing it. And, and LCC put the pressure on them, and Delphi St. John's withstood that pressure. So we see Cameron Elwer, the young sophomore for Delphi St. John's, averaging 28 a game. He leads all scores right now with 11. So he is not up to where he normally is per game, but uh, on his way to a nice afternoon scoring. There's Jordan Pretty going to the rim, and he'll get to the line for two shots. Well, Jordan attacking right away, you know, instead of just passing the ball around, saw the baseline, made a really good move, stepped through on the defense there, embraced the contact, now shooting two free throws. It's what they need to do. They've got to chip away. LC's got to chip away here. But if you're Delphi St. John's, still be patient and stick true to the game plan, which they did. Came out in a 2-3 zone. He knocks in the first one. Free throw sponsor tonight is the eyesight of Lima and Delphi. So Jordan Pretty knocks in the first one, makes it 30-16 to 16 with 7.44 to go in the third quarter. And he knocks the second one in. And that gives Jordan Pretty six on the afternoon. Makes it 30-18. to 18. Also see in their 2-2-1 zone press here. St. John's breaks the pressure. They get across half court. Well, LCC just trying to speed them up, trying to get them to take you know, quick shots. But very patient and disciplined with the ball right now for St. John's. Cameron Elwer with the ball out top, guarded by Carson Parker, foul line jumper, and he knocks it in. Cameron Elwer, the sophomore yeah. sensation, has got 13, and he makes it 32-17 on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. Just as his shot is so fluid, like there's just no kinks in. It just looks pure. This is Foster. Dribble drive. Takes a little jumper from the foul line. Gets his own rebound. Puts it back up. And they're going to get Burke on the rebound. Well, he stayed with it. You know, he got there. Missed it. Stayed with it. Kind of had some contact there. No call. But, you know, Billy Burke on the over, over and back there. So the Jays are inbounds. This is Cameron Elwer guarded by Pretty. 
They'll go Andrew Elwer on the left side. This is Andrew Elwer. Gets it across to Mentor, across half court. That's where they'll Here set comes it. the trap. He was going to say the trap up top on Andrew Elwer. Jordan Pretty, and they got a jump ball. Jordan Pretty did a great job of getting his hands on the ball, and he just he just pinned him there. Well, they did a really good job of trapping it. Andrew had a guy in the middle, couldn't see through Willie, but Jordan just kind of stuck his two arms in there. And, and again, quick jump ball, but if you're an official, you don't want this kid to be too physical, so. Ball goes back to Delta St. John's. This is Elwer, there's a three ball from the right side. My goodness, Cameron Elwer. He's got the last five points, knocks it in. He's got 15 on the night, and the Jays lead 34-17. Coach, how do you stop that? Well, you can't stop it. <laughs> but, but if you're Delta St. John's right now, they only gave him a two. There's Foster with a little jumper. The ball goes short off the rim. Rebound comes down. It's corralled by Austin Menner. He goes to the foul line, kicks it over to Elwer. Elwer gets it back to Cam Elwer. I thought he was going to pull up from the volleyball line there. Goes between his legs. He goes over to Menner. Menner, three ball from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to DeMar Foster. He'll lead the break down the middle of the floor. Carson Parker on the left side. He'll go baseline. He'll swing it back to Burke in the middle of the floor. This is Willie Foster. Goes back to Burke in a nice cutting drive. Burke puts it back up and he scores. Billy Burke, the 6'5 senior, knocks it in and shaves the lead to 34-19. Well, great job by Billy Burke by just staying with it. He, he took the contact, missed the layup, but he's so long and, and kept the ball up and, and scored on the offensive rebound. There, Menner missed. He missed a cutting. Austin Menner going to the rim. This is Menner from the right side. Three ball on the way up. Burke and Menner really battling underneath. Birds will get the rebound. Here comes Foster down the right side. Well, that was brother to brother connection. Yes, there, it so was. I'm sure he's going to hear it tonight when he gets home. Absolutely. DeMar Foster drives baseline on the right side. Left-handed scoop shot. He misses that one. Rebound comes down to the birds, and they'll get it to Cameron Elwer with 5.07 to play in the third quarter. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Basketball. WOSN. Welcome back here at Edward C. Hur Gymnasium on the campus of Lima Central Catholic High School. With 5.07 to go here in the third quarter, the Delta St. John's Blue Jays have come into town and they have a 34-19 lead under the hot shooting of one Mr. Cameron Elwood, who's got 15 to lead all scores. Well, you see, you'll see what they drew up here coming out of that timeout. Try to get him on the back door there, and Jordan did a really good job of not falling for it. There's a three ball from the left side. This is <laughs> Andrew Elwer, excuse me, the 5'11 freshman. He knocks it in. He's got nine on the night, and the Elwer brothers together have 24 points. Well, when you key in on, on one of them, obviously the other one's going to be open. And, you know, obviously right now, Andrew Elwer doing a really good job of knocking down shots. There you see Willie Foster does a really nice job of getting to the rim, and he closes the gap at 37-21. Willie does a great job. He just floats in the air, and I think this crowd wants to travel, but it's not a travel. travel. No, you're right. No. You're absolutely right. This is Andrew Elwer. Swings it back up top. Drew Boggs, number 10. There's a three ball on the way, and he knocks it down. Makes it 40 to 21. Elwer's got 12 on the night. St. John's 2 of 4 right now from the three point line, and Andrew. Knocking down two of them in a row. There's Jordan Pretty, a beautiful foul line That's jumper. Jordan he knocks Pretty. it in. He's got eight on the night, and it's 40-23 on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. And it looks like, what a great, did you see what happened there? Billy Burke grabs the ball out of the air and puts it on the back of the Delphi St. John's defender. Well, Billy could have just let it go, but it wasn't going to take any chances right. of Delphi saving that. And Billy, with his hustle, with his wide receiver skills, yes, exactly. being smart, just throws it off the kid. So Cameron Parker will walk it up the floor. Parker's got six on the night for the Birds. 3.45 to go here in the third quarter. Carson just, you know, he's got the great vision. He's got the intelligence. You know, he's trying to get the, the Birds set up and get some action here, see if they can cut this deficit. They're down 17 points right now. They need a bucket. Matthew Quatman in the game. There's a nice dribble drive by Willie Foster. That's there you see the Foster. quick hops of Willie Foster as he goes right side and he scores. Cuts the lead to 15 at 40-25. There's a three ball on the way. My goodness, Austin Menner and the Jays are sizzling right now. Menter's got eight and it's 43-25. Well, unfortunately for the Birds, they're getting twos where the Blue Jays are getting threes. So, you know, they're probably content with trading <laughs> exactly. threes for twos. Burke swings it over to Foster. Foster. Beautiful move by Foster. 
and he's going to go to the line. Willie Foster, you saw the quickness there, and he gets to the rim. Well, Willie, did, you know, he, he's doing a, a good job of getting to the rim. The focus in the locker room must have been, let's get to the rim, let's attack, because they have, you know, they've taken four, you know, they haven't taken a three this quarter here. So for LCC, the focus must have been, let's get to the rim. But if you're LCC, you got to flip that switch and get back on defense and find the shooters because right now, you know, Delphi St. John's has hit three straight threes for the for, for the third quarter sure. here. So you got to get back and play defense and get a hand up. Foster knocks in that one. Close the gap to 43-26. Willie's got seven on the night for the T-Birds. And to your point, you're right. Oh, Lima Central Catholic is just exchanging threes for twos. They've got to get back and give a better effort on the defensive end. And I'm sure Coach Powell is going to emphasize that. Well, he's given up way too many points. I don't know from Kurt, Coach Powell. That shot goes off the mark. Elwer being guarded way back behind the line. And they're going to say 10 second call. 10 second call. I, <laughs> I, I'm as stunned as you. I, that was a quick 10 seconds, but apparently it was 10 seconds. So, you know, I wish I would have been able to see the clock. Yeah, know, when yeah, I know. Throws. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> But it's a, you know, it was a good defense stand there for LCC, and now they got to, you know, be able to just keep chipping away. Parker Judy with the ball on the right side. He'll go Willie Foster. Nice drive on the left side. Willie Foster getting to the rim. He makes it 43-28. Foster's got nine on the night with 2:30 to go. And just going downhill, finishing around the rim. Here come the Jays. Here comes the trap. Get it back up top to Boggs. Boggs will swing it over to Mentor. Benner swings it back to Cameron Elwood, guarded by Jordan Pretty. 2.14 to go. Swing it back over. Three ball on the left side. In and out. Rebound comes down to Pretty. Pretty leads the break. He finds Parker Judy going down the right side. Shot goes up, and it's good. Parker Judy knocks it in, and here come the birds. It's 43-30 with 1.57 to go. Well, that was a good-looking shot from Delta St. John's, but... Coach Eller wants a timeout right now. He wants a timeout. We'll take a timeout with 152 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSC. Back here at Lima Central Catholic with 152 to go in the fourth, excuse me, third quarter. And the Delta St. John's Blue Jays lead 43 to 30. Coach Eller just wanted to probably stop the momentum that LCC was building, but you know, still, you want to get a good shot here. Be patient. This is Elwer, guarded up top by Pretty and Parker. They'll go mentor. Ball's taken away. Gets it to Carson Parker, takes it inside, and he knocks it the deuce, and he makes Parker. it 43-32. They've closed the gap to 11. Parker's got eight on the night, and here come the birds. Well, you know, when Mentor puts the ball on the floor right, you know, down there, you know, Willie Foster just tapped it away and it came right to him. A lot of pressure out by LCC as Delta St. John's gets it across the floor. Boggs gets the ball stolen. This is DeMar Foster, and Sean Powell gets a timeout. What an effort by DeMar Foster with 1.10 to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Lima Central Catholic High School. The Delta St. John's Blue Jays lead the LCC Thunderbirds 43-32. And Coach, 17 points was the largest lead. They've shaved it to 11, and they have the ball. Well, I mean, it started from the defensive end. They picked them up, but, you know, LCC is doing a really good job of creating pressure, and it's something that Delta St. John's didn't do in the, in the first half. They didn't turn the ball over in the, in the last two possessions. They've, they've, uh, they've turned the ball back over to LCC. Well, DeMar Foster threw the ball to K K or, excuse me, to Parker, and he just missed it. He wasn't looking for it. He'll go back inside. This is Willie Foster. Dribble drives straight up, and he scores. Willie Foster cuts it to nine at 43-34. Willie Foster's got 11 on the night. Well, that's seven straight buckets for the Thunderbirds. Seven straight without missing. Oh, there's a near steal as they throw the ball to the middle of the floor. Nobody was even anticipating that throw. Well, LCC, it's their pressure, it's their tenacious D that they're putting on them, but you know they're also, you know, they're getting a lot of, getting a lot of movement and, and, and ball kind of being knocked around. Cameron Elwer guarded up top by Willie Foster, and he is right up in his grill. 
They'll swing it over to Mentor. Mentor guarded by Parker Judy. Well, this defensive lineman that Coach Powell's went with, it's a little smaller with not having Burke on the floor or Angelo Collins. Carson Parker's your biggest guy out there. And they're going to get Willie Foster, who was guarding Cameron Elwood. Elwood a little bit frustrated there on the call, but he gets the call. That's LCC's second team foul, and it's Willie's second personal foul. So really not a bad foul with 11 seconds left. They'll bring Matthew Quatman in. He'll take Parker Judy's place as he goes back to the bench with 11 seconds to go. This is Mentor with the ball, guarded by Carson Parker. They go back into Cam Elwer, and they're going to get Matthew Quatman. As it looked like DeMar Foster and Matthew Putman were both following Cam Elward to the corner. Well, they were, because they were probably <laughs> trying to get, it, get the ball out of his hands and make somebody else shoot the ball. But still, it, again, this goes back to that fouling strategy. There's five seconds left, so it's going to be a quick shot. Double St. John's will inbounds, and there's a lob to Cam Elwer, and he knocks it in. Cam Elwer with the lob. And he makes it 45-34. He's got 17, and the last shot almost goes in after three quarters of play from Lima Central Catholic High School. The Delta St. John's Blue Jays lead 45-34. We'll have fourth quarter action right after these messages. Welcome back to Lima Central Catholic High School. After three quarters of play, the Delta St. John Blue Jays continue to lead the LCC T-Birds 45-34. Frank, Lima Central Catholic, a much better third quarter as they outscored the, the Jays 19-15 in that quarter. Well, for them to take 11 threes in the first half for LCC, they didn't take a single three in the entire third quarter. So obviously the focus was talking about, let's get to the rim, they can't, they can't guard us. They've done a good job of defending them, but you know, getting you know, Willie Foster going downhill to the basket has been a key. Yeah, Willie Foster, a great third quarter. There's Jordan Pretty from the right side. and knocks it in. Jordan Pretty with a much-needed three ball, and he cuts the lead to 45-37 with 7.49 to go in the game. A big three right there coming out of, out of the quarter. And there's a steal by DeMar Foster. Gets it back in. Oh, Bruce tried to find Carson, excuse me, tried to find Jordan Pretty, but he throws it on the end line and it'll go back to the Jays. Well, it was a good hustle by DeMar. He really had nowhere to go just other than he got it up in the air and, and tried to save it, but good defensive stop right there. But that's what they're going to have to do this quarter. I, I, I'm just amazed. <laughs> I'm just kind of stuttering here. I'm just amazed at the quickness and the and the, uh, the 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 attitude change in the third quarter. They're just all over the ball right now. Maybe there was a trash can thrown or something <laughs> because obviously there's a little more pep in the uh, Thunderbird step. <laughs> if there was one around, I may have kicked it. I didn't throw a lot of things. <laughs> Here comes Delta St. John's leading 45-37. I learned my lesson one time, you know, bathroom stalls will always win, so. <laughs> we'll go there, we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> this is Mentor with the ball up top, guarded by Jordan Pretty. Go back to Cam Elwer, guarded by Willie Foster. A great matchup on the right side of the floor. Delta St. John's lead 45-37. This is Mentor with the ball. Willie Foster picks him, hands him off to Jordan Pretty. They'll go right side. They'll double team Elwer at the top. Seven minutes to go here in the game. Well, St. John's just being extremely patient right now, not, uh, not really collapsing right now, worried about the pressure. This is Tyson McLean in the game now for the Jays. This is Mentor. Mentor had a hot first half and hasn't shot the ball much here in the second half. They've kind of kept him in check this half. Thought about taking the three. McLean with the ball on the left side. He'll dribble drive left side. Shot goes off the mark. Rebound comes down. Carson Parker brings it down the left side. Here comes Parker and the Birds. He'll dribble drive left side. Takes it up and he scores. Are you kidding me? Carson Parker switches hands. Goes in left side. and makes it 45-39 with 6.20 to go. Well, we got ourselves a ball game here. But, you know, if you were St. John's, you know, be patient. Get a quality shot down here. Here come the Blue Jays with a six-point lead. Largest lead of the night was 17 by the Blue Jays. And the Birds have fought back from that 17-point deficit. Willie Foster wanted to travel there. Pretty close. Go back inside the Mentor. And the Mentor, nice job of getting position as he lofts it in, makes it 47-39. There's a senior leader right there. Well, that's 10 big points there for the Blue Jays coming from Aaron Mentor. So, you know, they got what they wanted, a bucket, down on the block, quality shot. 
The last shot from McLean, not exactly the shot I'm sure Coach Alvaro wanted, wanted to be seen. So here's Willie Foster on the left side as he's had great luck this half and driving just like that one. And there you see Willie Foster. He's got 13 on the night and he's doing what he wants in the middle of the floor. Well, he's averaging 12, so he's above his average right now, but they're really relying on him to get into the rim. 47-41, there you saw Matthew Plotman a little overzealous on the play, and he gets charged with the foul at half court. It's a great call, but you know, if you're Matthew Plotman, you're just trying to make some things happen, and that's sure. only a second Absolutely. team's first foul, team's first. so, you know, good hustle, and that, that's the type of attitude that you have to have right now. They've clawed themselves back into this game it's to a great be down point. six, not by being passive, but by being extremely aggressive. 5.19 to go. Danny Holbrook, Frank Kill from Lima Central Catholic High School. It's the Holy War on Sunday afternoon here. Frigid temperatures outside, but this gym is heating up as the Jays lead 47-41. There's Menner with a nice little step through in the middle of the floor. And he makes it 49-41. Menner's got 12 on the night. He's doing a really good job of just being patient and getting to the rim and embracing that, you know, Billy Burke's contact. Here's Willie Foster with another dribble drive for the rim. Billy Burke out of nowhere corrals the ball, gets it back to Foster, puts it back up, and he scores. Oh, Willie Foster. Foster has been on fire. He's got 15 to lead the birds, and it's 49-43. But it was a good offensive rebound by Burke to keep that alive, even though he missed the putback. But Foster being right there to, to kind of clean it up is, is what you want to see. It's the fight. You don't want to give up right now. Here come the Jays up 49-43 with 4.28 to go. They've been really passive, and when I mean that, they've been really tentative on their shot selection here in the fourth quarter. Their mentor gets inside. Aaron Minter has had the last six points for the Jays, and he has been everything to them this quarter. Well, I, I talked about, you know, when, when McLean shot that one shot, it wasn't the shot that the Blue Jays needed, but these last three shots by Mentor have been right on the block, and the last one was just set up by Cam Eller. Willie Foster misses it. Billy Burke Billy knocks in the Burke. rebound, and he makes it 51-45. So everybody's scoring right now. We're back and forth. we got a six-point game with 3.52 to go. Well, who can get a stop here? You know, obviously, there's, there's, there's a the steal. steal. There's the steal. That's the one you wanted, Coach. Jamar Foster gets the ball. He'll bring it down the middle of the floor. 3.43 to go. Jays lead 51-45. Get it to Burke in the middle. Here's Matthew Plotman, three ball from the right side, off the mark, and Burke corrals it, steps over the line, and they're going to say it goes back to Delta St. John's. Looked like maybe a little contact there, but Burke really, in no man's land, had to get rid of the ball. Well, Billy's so long, his, his length is right there. And, you know, he, he, there, was no, there was no foul, there was no push in the back or anything like that. Billy's just got long arms, and, and he had really nowhere to go other than throw it out. We'll take the break here with 3.33 to go. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Delta St. John's coach leads this all-time series 50 to 44, but the T-Birds have won the last three in the series. Well, I tell you what, it's it's one of those series, it's the traditions of this game that, you know. This you is never, Army, Navy, you, Michigan, Ohio State, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> you know, and, and I said it was always one of those games you circle on your calendar because it's that important to both schools' communities. So 3.33 to go. Delta St. John's will inbounds the ball. Lima Central Catholic in a man press. They get the ball inside. This is Mentor with the ball. Jordan Pretty tried to knock it out from behind. They'll go back to Mentor. He crosses the timeline. And here comes the trap. You know, if you're McLean, you don't want to get caught in a the trap there. Oh, he traveled. Looks like a travel. I mean, yeah. he, he, did you see him put his hands up by his head? Yeah. He understood what he did and got away with one there. Here comes Cam Elwer. Elwer's got 17 on the night. He's double teamed up top. Finds his brother in the middle of the floor. We're down to three minutes. Three ball from the right side, and it's off the mark. It was in and out, and here comes DeMar Foster. 51-45, St. John's lead, 2.49 to go. Boy, that would have been huge oh for the Blue goodness. Jays. How oh. that didn't go down. Here's Willie Foster, dribble drive to the left side. And he loses the ball, and they're going to say Mentor fouled him on the drive. And they're, they're going to say it was on the floor, right? Yeah, because the kid, because Mentor was behind the basket, the shot had already been taken, so it was after it was after the shot was, and so which was a really good call, kind of a break for the Blue Jays. Aaron Mentor, that's his third foul of the night with 2:40 to go here. You got to believe they're going to stay with him in the game. 
up 51-45. Well, he's a senior. They need him on the floor. He's been kind of their, uh, you know, bread and butter and their answer when they need one. Pretty gets it in. Tried to get it into Carson Parker, but it went over his head, but corralled by DeMar Foster. Foster dribble drive foul line. He'll go back out to Willie Foster. He's going to drive. He'll kick it to left. Jordan pretty from the left side. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down the mentor. Kicks it out to Cam Elwer. Well, they got the shot across. that they wanted. Yes, they did. They'll go back up top to Cam Elwer. He'll dribble drive right side. Takes the shot up. And he's going to be fouled by Billy Burke underneath the basket. <laughs> and you know what? That's what the doctor ordered right there. You know, Cameron Elwer knew he needed to get to the rim. Embrace the contact. Again, Billy was kind of the wall there, but a lot of contact. And, you know, that's that's the right call and for Cameron Elward to go to the line right now. He's getting a little bit of the break that he needs. He's played a lot of minutes the second half, so he's, he's definitely going to enjoy these two free throws. So both the big men for both squads, Mentor with 3,000, Burke with 3,000. And there you see a rare miss by Cam Elward. He misses that shot. Tonight's free throw sponsor is the eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Unterbrink at the eyesight of Lima Delphus provides quality comprehensive eye care for Lima and Delphus. So he makes that one, makes it 52-45 with 2.13 to go. Gets it over to Pretty on the right side. Burke screens for Carson Parker. They'll go back Jordan Pretty trying to get the ball inside on the low post. Parker dribble drives to the rim, takes it up, and he knocks it in. Carson, Carson Parker, Parker wanted the foul, and there's a stoppage on the play. Timeout. Oh, okay, timeout. My fault. I thought there was a play. Carson Parker had looked at the official, so we'll take a timeout with 1.59 to go. You're watching High School Sports on WSA. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. So we see Carson Parker, Coach, on that last drive. A lot of contact, no call made there. Well, it was a good call. You know, these, these three officials, Doc Morris, Jason Elder, and Max Baldwin, are, you know, to get three, qual three tonight, quality yeah. officials yeah. right now with all the other tournaments that are going on with all the Martin Luther King Day, uh, you know, invitations that are going sure. on to get these three guys at this time of the day. What a blessing. But, you know, for Carson to get to the rim right there and finish around the rim, definitely what they needed. And, you know, with two minutes left, it's game time. So the Jays will inbounds the ball. They get back to Manor. Manor guarded by Carson Parker. Well, they got to get it across here. It's exactly what I was thinking. They do get it across. I was looking at the clock to see if we were close to 10 seconds. Manor with the ball guarded by Carson Parker up top. They'll get it over to the younger Elwer. Elwer double teamed up top, and we're going to get a timeout. timeout. Coach Elwer saw the need for a timeout. He takes the timeout. We'll take a timeout with 1.38 to go. You're watching high school basketball. WSN. Back here at Lima Central Catholic High School. Another great job of camera work by our camera people here tonight. Jacobs and Kelsey just shooting everything. <laughs> Danny over at Frank Gill from Lima Central Catholic High School. 138 to go. 52-47. Coach, how quick you wanna do you wanna take your time here? What, what's the strategy with 138 to go? Well, you're in control. I mean, you're up two possessions, but you got to take care of the ball, and you know because LCC is going to be extremely aggressive. And there you see Andrew Elwer get behind the defense, and he knocks it in. And Willie Foster got his hand on the ball, and he knocks it in, makes it 54-47. This is Parker. He'll dribble drive, goes down low, takes it up. Shot goes off the mark. Jordan Pretty with the rebound comes back down to Burke. Ball's on the floor. Burke gets it over to Demar Foster. Foster with the shot and knocks it in. Great, great hustle, great effort. Not giving up on the play. A couple missed bunnies around there for the T-Birds, but. You know, not giving up on the play it was big time with one minute to go. It's now or, it's now or never. And here we go with one minute to go. And we got a 10 second call, a 10 second call against Elvis St. John. And Coach Elwer was screaming at Denny Morris for a timeout, and he is livid, Coach. Well, it's one of those where he, he's, you know, he's 45 feet from the basket. Yes. These other two that are down here on this center are counting where you got Coach Morris down here just watching the play, but Coach Morris, Denny Morris, Denny Morris right. um, you know, not his fault. Here's DeMar Foster with the ball up top. Gets it over to Carson Parker. 
Here goes Foster, triple drives at the baseline, kicks it back out to DeMar. Three ball from the right side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Jays, and it's Corral. They're going to get pretty on the foul. There you saw Colin Feathers with a big rebound for the Blue Jays, and Pretty had no choice but the foul. Well, that shot, that goes down for DeMar Foster. This roof was going to explode, but, you know, if you're Coach Hour, you've got one timeout left. You definitely want to use them wisely. So 54-49 with 42 seconds to go. Lima Central Catholic unbeaten streak on the line here as they are 11-0 on the season. Delta St. John's trying to come in to Edward C. Hurd Gymnasium and get a big non-conference win. Well, and right now with LCC, they, that's their picking up their, I think their 14 foul here. So the next one will be two shots, but you know, LCC's gotta be aggressive because they gotta put some guys in the line, but I know Delphi St. John's kids, they're really good. They spent a lot of time at the free throw line. So, you know, they're gonna get the ball into Cameron Eller's hands. Mentor gets the ball into Mentor, Mentor to Mentor. And they'll double team him. This is Andrew Elwer as he gets double team. And Damar Foster is going to get a foul there. And Damar Foster just trying to get hold of the ball. And Andrew Elwer walking to the line briskly. And there you see here the Blue Jays are faithful with a little bit of a cheer there. Well, it's because they know that the clock has stopped and they're taking two free throws with one of the kids that they want at the line. So if you're Andrew Elwer, these are big shots for a freshman. Andrew Elwer. Goes to the line, and he misses the first one. The eyesight of Lima and Delphus is our free throw sponsor tonight. So he misses the first one. A big miss for the Blue Jays. 34 seconds to go. Life still for LCC. Second one on the way, and he misses that one. Burke with the rebound. Here come the birds. Well, they got two timeouts left, so they don't want to waste too much time here. This is DeMar Foster up top, Carson Parker. Three ball from the left side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Foster, and they're going to get, looks to me like Colin Feathers as he went underneath a pretty just trying to go for the ball. Well, good offensive rebound with, with, from Willie, but, you know, obviously the kid was box, you know, boxing out, you know, Jordan Pretty there, but it's only their second team foul, so it really didn't hurt. It kind of took away the opportunity for Willie Foster to get a bucket. 21 seconds, they'll go back inside to Carson Parker. Burke with the ball at the foul line. They're going Jordan Pretty. Three ball, and yeah, Mentor with a big foul. And you had to call that one, Coach. A lot of contact. A lot of contact. Jordan Pretty, um, you know, obviously great shooter. He's going to come to the line shooting three, but, you know, right now I think he's only shooting about 50 or 60% from the free throw line, so. You know, he's got an opportunity to obviously improve his stats, but he's 62% from the free throw line. 17 seconds to go, first one on the way, and he misses that one. Jordan Pretty, the sophomore, averaging 16 a game, but as Coach said, a little bit of a trouble from the free throw line, so it's still 54-49. Second one on the way, and it's good. Cuts the lead to 54-50, and this is a huge free throw as they can cut it to a one possession game right here. Well, with 17 seconds left, there's, still, there's gonna be a lot of free throws being yes, shot around right. here. You're absolutely right. So here's Jordan Pretty, last one on the way, and he knocks it in. It's 54-51 with 17 seconds to go. Menner inbounds the ball, full court pressure by the Birds. They'll go Menner to Menner, Menner in the corner, and Jordan Pretty with the necessary foul there. Two seconds off the clock, nice job of the Birds there. Yeah, I mean, Austin Menner is going to go to the free throw line. They, St. John's has missed three free throws in a row, three of their last four that they've taken, so... You know, right now you, you got a kid at the line that has, you know, a lot of confidence as a senior. He's been in the situation before. You know, did St. John's really want to get it to Cameron Hour, but they got a senior at the line. And he misses the first one. Austin Mentor misses the first one with 15 seconds to go. Just put a little bit too much on it. Parker Judy coming in the game now for Billy Burke. He'll take a seat. Well, if you're Coach Powell, do you, do you want a timeout? You know, you're going to take a timeout if he sure. misses it or if he makes it. A lot of uh, a lot of things could happen. Second on the way, and he misses that one. Rebound comes down. Cameron Elwer, a great job of hustling for that ball, and that was just hustle there, Coach. Well, no one put a body on Cameron Elwer, and it went to the farthest part where Cameron Elwer, because he was on the bottom block there and just sprinted down the, the baseline there and got that offensive rebound but no one had boxed him out. And it looked like Carson Parker had the ball. He was going to the corner, and Cam Elwood, you're right, just slid down the baseline, and he picks it up. Again, I'm not sure how many offensive rebounds. I don't have the official stats, but I think it's their first offensive rebound this second half. 
Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services. Helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit Metzger Financial Services. Well, well, Coach, we were both in the building for OG LCC. We're both in the building here for this one. Uh, pair us together some more. Well, <laughs> great, <laughs> game, great games. Great games. But if you're LCC, you really needed that rebound. With 15 seconds left, you were down one possession. Now you put the ball back in the Blue Jays' hands. And now I can guarantee you, if, if Coach Heller is as smart as I think he is, he's going to find a way to get, get it to the Cameron. Get Cameron Heller. You're absolutely right. You know, he's right. the guy that has the ice in his veins. Not to say, you know, having Austin Mentor sure. out there no, no, no. or Andrew Eller, but get the ball in the kid's, kid's hands who's extremely, you know, successful at the free throw line. So the Blue Jays are trying to improve to 9-2 and two on the season. They did not play Friday night. They've got a game tomorrow night, so they'll be back-to-back -back just like LCC was last night tonight. Uh, you, you wonder if that helped them out a little bit in this game. You know, who knows? But, you know, that first half, they they did not uh, – they didn't come out from the tip. You know, the, the first 16 minutes, you, you and I exactly talked about right. it. You know, their their energy level, their, their kind of spunk, they just didn't have. And, you know, yeah, it's pretty cold outside. But, you know, after watching the Chiefs and the Dolphins <laughs> game the other night, you got to be ready to play no matter what the, you know, yeah. the, the situation is. My Browns played in a balmy 65 degrees in <laughs> Houston. And, well, they didn't play. Let's just, uh, we won't talk they about that. Yeah, they, they showed up. I'm not sure they, they played. I, uh, I, threw, <laughs> I threw up, too. Yeah, you're right. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. So the... That's been, that's been a back-to-back -back timeout, Yeah, I guess. there was. And, and one of the LCC assistant coaches was talking to the official about that, not real sure what they said, but they are still having a conversation with him. Well, they might be asking where they're going after the game. Who knows? But, <laughs> you know, St. John's is ready. The buzzer's been rang. So it, it, something's – obviously, we, we need a guy down at the scores we table. Do, like, we do. We do. Can we, have, can we talk to management about getting somebody at the scores table for every game, Jacob? <laughs> So still discussions going on here between the officials and the coaches. I think they're taking another timeout. Uh, and the crowd is visibly upset. We're not real sure what's going on here with 13.5 seconds to go. But LCC back on the floor. And Dub St. John's will take it out in front of their home crowd. Cameron Elward will trigger the ball in. May have been the longest timeout I've you're, ever seen. You're absolutely right, Coach. That was a long timeout. They get it into Mender. Mender gets back to Elwer, and Elwer's going to be fouled by Carson Parker. If he doesn't foul him, he's got an easy lane to the bucket. Wide open layup, but you have to foul him. You know, you have to put him. You know, but LCC, you know, they got 11 seconds left. Even if they don't, even if, let's say, St. John scores two here, they're down still two possessions. Get the ball down the floor, get a quick shot, and then call yourself a timeout because the clock's going to continue to run. Elward knocks that one in. Cameron Elward, the sophomore sensation, has got 19, which is nine under his season average. And he's going to get a chance for a second shot to make it an even 20. Well, that's their first That's their first free throw. They missed four free throws in a row. And you know Cameron Elward is the guy that you want up the line. Second on the way, and it's good. Nothing but the net. 56-51, here come the birds. DeMar Foster brings the ball down the left side. Takes the ball up on the left side, and he scores to make it 56-53. So LCC makes it a one possession game with 4.9 on the clock. Well, what they're going to have to do, obviously, they're going to have to either foul. They're gonna, they don't have to foul right away. When I say right away, they want to go right, for a steal. steal. Yeah. You want to get a quick steal, but then you got to get a three. Because with four seconds left, there's no time to get a quick bucket and then foul again. you got to get a three-pointer. So a steal has to take place, hit a guy shooting a three. If not, then you got to foul. Coach, if you get a steal, do you have a design play where you got to have somebody in position to get the ball? Well, the hard part is you don't know what St. John's is going to do. Sure. Are they going to clear it out? Are they going to put one guy down? You know, they're going to bring everybody up because LCC is going to have everybody up. So, you know, they might stick one guy deep, but they got to get the ball in bounds first and then, you know, go from there, but they're just going to hold the ball because obviously a five-second count sure. is not a big deal. So 
LCC might, might come in. The possession arrow goes to Delta St. John's, even if there's a jump ball. So they're going to get it in. They're going to hold it. If there's a jump ball, it's still going to kill a and, second or two. And something important to note, that, that Delta St. John's has no timeouts left. So they've got to get the ball in. There's no calling a timeout. Lima Central Catholic has one timeout left. And if you're Coach Elwer, they, you tell your kids, if you can't get it in, throw it long to somebody that's 70 feet from the basket. You can't let Lima Central Catholic get underneath have the right. ball underneath the hoop. Right. So settle in here with 4.9 seconds to go. Delta St. John's leads by three, 56-53, trying to snap the unbeaten streak of the LCC T-Birds. Mentor will trigger the ball in. The ball is guarded by Jordan Pretty. They'll switch off of him and get the ball into Elwer, and Elwer's going to be fouled immediately with 3.6 seconds to go. No, you have to. I mean, going for the steal, but you have to foul. But, you know, Cameron Elwer's, you know, two for two right now in the biggest moment. So. You know, his, his, uh, his confidence level's going sure, up. Sure, absolutely. But if you're Coach Elwer, you've got exactly what you wanted right there. You got the ball into the best shooter, and you killed a second. And the first one is on the way, and it is good. Cameron Elwer's got 21 on the night to lead all scores. Gives the Jays the 57-53 lead. And that one may have done it to seal this victory for the Blue Jays. Second on the way. And it's good. 58-53 with 3.6 seconds to go. Carson Parker will bring it down, let it fly from half court, and misses that shot. That'll do it from Lima Central Catholic. The Thunderbirds fall to the Delta St. John's Blue Jays. 58-53. Coach, your final thoughts on the Holy War edition. Well, it, it, it lived up to the hype. You know, Absolutely. because both teams coming in here very successful so far. I don't think this one loss for Lima Central Cabin is going to be a blemish. It, it's it's going to hurt a little bit, but it's, it's kind of an eye opener for an undefeated team. What do we need to do to get better? The Delta St. John's, you enjoy this, but they got to get ready for the four recovery game that they, they canceled on Friday. So, knowing Coach Heller, you know, kudos to them. They made some big shots down the stretch, but they've got to continue to keep shooting the ball like they did in the first half and the second in the third quarter because that got them hot. Our final score tonight as we wrap this one up. Delta St. John's 58, Lima Central Catholic 53. For our entire WOSN crew, for Frank Hill, I'm Danny Hobart saying thanks for watching High School Sports on WOSN.